Our next guest needs no introduction. He's our guy, Dave Wanstead. Coach, thank you so much for joining me. Do you have a title prediction for the women's championship? Well, you, you know what? I, I'm not sure. I know LSU is a great coach. I, I've had breakfast with her head coach, Kim, and she's outstanding. I think she's she's tough. She's old school, but she gets results. Uh, I just, you know, if Iowa doesn't win, I don't want this uh, Caitlin Clark not winning a national championship to be a determining factor in her legacy because, you know, she could score 40 points and they could lose this game and they're going to say, well, she never won a national championship. I don't know if that's fair, Lauren. So uh, I'm not going to pick a team. Obviously, she's brought so much notoriety, notoriety to the women's basketball, women's sports. It's, it's fantastic. So I'm excited about that, having two daughters. Look, my alma mater, you know it very well. DePaul University, they played Iowa at Kinnick Football Stadium at Iowa. Like that, that tells you right there that how many people want to watch Caitlin Clark play. I'm still probably going to go with South Carolina. Their head coach, Don Staley, she's amazing as well. And that team is absolutely loaded. But this has been fun. You know what's great about this, Coach? We probably know more coaches and players on the women's side this year than on the men's side. How crazy is that? It, it is. And you know what? I would agree with you. I would say I probably hope that Iowa wins tonight and they play South Carolina. And South, Car South Carolina's got the best team. I mean, their coach is outstanding. I mean, I think South Carolina wins it this year. But it would be great to see Iowa with Caitlin Clark in the finals, I think. I think that'd be good for 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 sports. For I, I don't want to say women's sports. It would be good for sports in general. I agree with you. Let's talk a little bit about the draft. I, I want to know this because, look, when you're here in studio, every now and again you'll pull out a piece of paper and you're like, Lawrence, this is the way that we do things. and I love that. So help the viewer out. How are draft boards set up? How, what do you do with rankings and the positions when you're in an NFL front office? Well, you know, it, it's done a couple of different ways. Everybody kind of has their philosophy. The way I was brought up going back to the Dallas days is we would have one board uh, on one side of the wall that we had every position that was ranked, you know, from quarterbacks, okay, this is one through 25 or whatever. And then we had the running backs, one through 25, and we would have them ranked by their grades and all the statistics and everything that went with them. And we would talk about each one of them. And when we were going through our draft meetings, uh, this board would change. You know, you have to start somewhere. But once the scouts were given their opinions and the coaches were given their opinions, uh, you might move a guy from number uh, you know, five up to number two, or you might move him down. I think a, that there's a discussion for that happening at wide receiver. We'll get into it in a minute in this year's draft. And then we had another board that, okay, let's set this board up on this side from the first player that we think is the best player in the draft to number 500 or whatever the number might be, you know. And so we had two boards that we were kind of looking at. And, and, and there's some general managers and coaches and presidents and owners that want, we're always going to take the best player available. So they're working off that big board. And then there's other teams that feel like they're closer to maybe winning that Super Bowl. The last year or two we were in Dallas, yeah, we had the big board, but we also had a board that we had by position, and we need we were going to try to fill needs. You know, when we had the first pick and we took Russell Maryland, Russell Maryland probably wasn't the best player in that draft, to be honest with you. But we took him with the first pick, because we had a real need at defensive tackle, and we were we felt like we were this close from from getting over the top, and and obviously we end up winning a Super Bowl. So uh, there's a couple of different ways to go about it, uh, but uh, that's the two ones I think are most popular with with most franchises. We know what the Bears are going to do at number one. What about number nine? What would you be looking at? I, I, I'd have, I'd go with defense. I really would, and. And there's a lot of great receivers, I think, that uh, uh, would be worthy and are worthy of that pick. 
you know, this is the first draft, and I think we talked a little bit, Lawrence, that, uh, you know, last year out of the first nine picks, there were four defensive players taken. You know, when you look at the the the, the players and their rankings, and we know that there's going to be four quarterbacks, maybe five taken in the top ten, and then you throw in a couple of those offensive tackles, and then the receivers, there could not be – uh, there may not be a defensive player taken until the Bears pick at number nine. So they can have the pick. If they wanted defense, they can have the pick of the entire board. And personally, now that they signed Keenan Allen, they got DJ Moore, they got, we got to see if Scott can play. I mean, we got some young kids in there, uh, you know, with a new quarterback and a new system. Maybe they blossom. Who knows? Uh, but I would take another defensive lineman and uh, because you got the pick of the entire draft. And the guy that, that I like is the uh, burst kid at Florida State. And I, I, I tell you why, Lawrence, I don't know. You know, when everybody talks about these defensive ends, I still call them defensive ends. I, somehow they got canceled. And now the word is, you know, edge rushers. I mean, come on, let's go. An edge rusher to me is a defensive end. The guy's got to be able to play the run and the pass. And I think out of all these guys, I think Dallas Turner is a great player in, in, in Alabama. I think that the kid at, at UCLA is a great player. I mean, I, I like the guy at uh, uh, at Missouri is a great player. There's a lot of great edge rushers, but in my opinion, the guy that's the closest to what the Bears want to do, a 4-3 defensive end that can play the run, and he's averaged nine sacks a year down there at Florida State the last two years. Started off his career at Albany, New York. Wasn't recruited by many people out of Pennsylvania. Uh, this is a kid that I think has a lot of upside. And uh, he's a tough guy. He plays the run as well as he plays the pass. I think this guy could come in and really help the Bears for a lot of years. It's funny because early in the show, I was talking with Josh Schrock about this very subject on whether or not the Bears needed to add another defensive end for Montez Sweat to play opposite of Montez Sweat or a three technique. If you were making the choice looking at this year's draft, your move would be defensive end, not three technique. It, it would be, Lawrence, and, 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 uh, and I'll tell you what, you know, Josh did a great job. I watched the show, and he's very, very educated on what's going on up there. But I, I would take the defensive end because, you know what, I like, uh, you know, I like the free agents that we signed. You know, I like the draft picks, Dexter and those guys. I mean, I, I think they're just going to get better. I see potential, and I see some good players it's our defensive tackle position. And I would give those guys a chance to kind of mature a little bit and to get better. I think the one area that we're missing is that other defensive end. And if you get two good ends and you get those tackles pushing the pile, nothing nothing helps the pass rush better than that. Yep, you get two good ends, that means there's one-on-ones in the middle and your young guys can grow and learn and become better and maybe become a force in the middle. So let's let's talk receivers for a second. Let's say you were going to draft a receiver. Who are your favorites? Well, my, my I, I, I got three guys that I really like. I, I, I like, obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, I, you know let's, let, I don't know what we can say about him. I do like him, but I'll tell you what. The neighbor's guy from LSU who we're looking at, this guy has the best yak yards. And yak, for our viewers, it's yards after the catch. This guy can make people miss better than anybody. This guy can can make a three or four yard gain into a 10 yard gain. And he can catch the deep ball. I mean, this guy is a play maker. I mean, I love him, okay? I, I really love him. Uh, th- then you got obviously the guy from Washington that, that everybody's talking about, the uh, Oduze, uh, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Roman, he, this guy, Think about this stat now, Lawrence. Okay, you know, he's a big guy, 6'3, 215, whatever, 210. He had the best, he had he, his catch percentage when he was guarded was 75% this year. In other words, he caught 75 of the passes, 75% of the passes when guys were hanging on him. And so this guy, you throw him the ball, I don't know if he's a deep threat. He, he maybe can't run as well as some of these guys. 
but he is a size guy and his hands and his concentration are off the chart. And, you know, I kind of like the Coleman guy from Florida State. You know, he's he's even bigger, he, you know, six, three and a half. And, and he's great. He reminds me a little bit of Mike Evans. Hmm. You know, I think in the red zone, this guy is as good as any of them. And I'm going to throw another name on. I was looking over these guys after I talked to our producer tonight. And and, and the guy, is it, it, it's uh, uh, Jalen Polk out of Washington. He was like the second or, or the third guy that they talked about. But this guy is like Samuels at the 49ers, okay? If you like Debo Samuels at the 49ers, that you can put in the backfield. This guy's as tough as nails. He can run. He can play in the backfield. He can play a slot receiver. He can put him outside. This is a sneaky guy. I'll tell you what, you, you get him on your football team, he's going to help you win a lot of games. Coach, as always, we appreciate the time. Go chase the grandchildren. We will see you soon. I'm, I'm late on that already, Lawrence. I hope to see him in the morning. That's about where I'm at, okay? Our coach <laughs> breaking it all down. Congrats. You finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.